Hello, this is Steven Seifert. I'm pretty excited. This is a new instrument by Terry McCafferty. We're calling it the Seifert model. It's an acoustic dulcimer, but it also has a variety of uh, options for getting the sound out of it. There's a magnetic pickup. There's a piezo pickup system. And there's a 13 pin out, which is going to allow you to connect this to uh, an instrument modeler or a synthesizer. So I want to just step you through the sounds that are available on this. Before I do that, just really quick, I want to talk about some changes that Terry has made um, for me over the last few years. One thing we've got here is a flathead that allows the strings to pass cleanly from the nut to the tuners. And there's a nice downward angle coming from the nut to the tuner posts. Um, all the tuners face me. This thing stays in tune really well. He's machined these nuts so that the strings can pass through them nicely. This thing stays in tune great. Um, also over here on the right, each one of these strings has its own saddle. And each saddle has a piezo pickup crystal in it. Now what's really cool here is you can adjust where that saddle is. So you can adjust for intonation. You can actually put thicker strings on here, thinner strings. It'll, it'll allow down to a baritone, which is great. There's also a system of putting shims in and taking them out for each string so you can raise and lower each string. Really handy. This allows you to adjust the action. So some players like the strings to be real low, some like them higher. And if you were to make this into a baritone, you would want to raise the action a little bit. So um, one more thing down here that's super cool is these, these saddles on the outside, you can flip them. Not the middle one, but the outside strings. You can flip it, and one way will space these three strings out in a way that dulcimer players are used to. But if you flip it the other way, you get something that Aaron O'Rourke started, which is closer string spacing for the saddle side of the instrument while maintaining the dulcimer spacing on the nut side of the instrument. And this is all about flat picking. A lot of times regular dulcimer spacing is a little wide for the right hand to do the fast fancy stuff. But this is cool because you can go back and forth. You can try the narrow. If you don't like it, you can go back to the wide. Super versatile. This instrument um, has an access panel on the back, and it also takes a battery. It's an active preamp in there for the piezo. It's an acoustic instrument, too, so Terry took a lot of steps to maintain vibrations, and we did a lot of before and after um, experiments and, and recordings. The main thing he did, there's other things, but the main thing he did, you, you put a big magnetic pickup on top of an instrument and it's going to reduce vibrations. This magnetic pickup is not sitting on the fingerboard. It looks like it is, but it isn't. It's also not sitting on the top of the dulcimer. There are two legs that allow it to sit on the back of the instrument. So there's actually two holes here, small holes. So that's great. Um, there are two screws here that allow you to adjust the height of either side of this pickup. 
A lot of versatility here. Uh, some of his traditional model dulcimers have a violin edge. This is smooth. And you've got all these controls here, which I will walk through. I've got two cables coming out of this, which you don't have to do all of this, but I am going to show you everything. So um, let's jump right into the sounds. I want to start off by giving you just the acoustic sound of this. You know, it's hard to get a microphone to really represent what an instrument sounds like. If if you were sitting in a room, in a, like a living room with this, with hardwood floors, this thing sounds great. So here's a little bit with just the uh, microphone. So what I love about this is if I just had one doll somewhere to take with me somewhere, I know that if I show up at the gig and all they have is a microphone, this is still going to put out sound. And uh, that's great. I think what I want to do is talk about the different scenarios. So what's the, uh, the one scenario is you show up and there's either no microphone or just a microphone and that's it. And so I'm covered with this. But what if I need to plug in? And I guess the most common thing is when you get to a larger venue. If you just use microphones, you know, they have monitors sitting in front of you so that the artists can hear themselves. You're going to get feedback and weird stuff. And a lot of those guys are used to a piezo type system. Some kind of plug-in pickup. So I want you to hear this, and I'm going to let you hear what's coming right out of this, and then we'll talk about what you can do to tweak it a little bit. So here's the, the piezo system. Each string, like I said, has a crystal under it, and it all is coming out this quarter-inch jack right here. So it's a little bright right now. And um, actually, I had the bass rolled off. Here's the bass that normally comes out of it. You can hear it's kind of thumpy a little bit. So the good news is it can handle lower tuned strings, heavier strings. But I'm going to go ahead and just take out that bass a little bit. Now it's a little bright which is why Terry put this tone knob on here. So I want you to hear it darken up a little bit. That's real dark. So typically what you want to do is this this does have a preamp built into it, but typically what you want to do is come out into some kind of EQ pedal or something like that where you've got lows, mids, highs. Um, something I typically have with me. But to be able to make this darker, very nice. So I want you to hear a little bit of that. And the reason you use this kind of pickup is it does, it sounds more like an acoustic mic than, say, a magnetic. It's got that crisp sound at the top. And that extra bass can be good when you really want to dial in a good thump on the instrument. 
But one thing you'll see sometimes, I've had this happen quite a bit, the sound man at a large venue is going to want to mostly use this sound, but he's going to tuck the microphone in a little bit. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to, here's just the microphone. And I'm going to bring up the piezo. So when you get this combination, since I'm getting the highs from the microphone, I can take this tone knob and knock the, uh, the highs off of the piezo pickup. So I'm getting the, hot, the pick sound from the microphone. But a little bit of direct warmth from the pickup. I'm going to add a little bit of the highs back in from the pickup. So that's a pretty usable sound, you know. love that so I like that I can go somewhere um, you know where the sound man's expecting something to happen like this and I can be there ready to go now this battery in the back you get a lot of hours it's it's a lot of hours um, but you should have a nine volt with you and if it starts to go the sound just stops so how Make sure you use a new 9 volt for really important gigs, but otherwise just keep one in your pocket or keep one in your gig bag, something like that. Um, we'll talk more about this piezo system in a little bit. I want to shift over to this magnetic. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mic in the room. And um, I want you to hear this magnetic. So the way this works, you know, you've got the piezo and you've got the magnetic. Magnetic's going to sound a little more like an electric guitar sound. And both of these pickups come out of this quarter inch here, blended. And the blend is determined by the two volume knobs or dials. So right now I'm turning the bridge all the way down. And I'm going to turn the magnetic all the way up. The magnetic also has a tone dial. So I'll let you hear a little bit of this. You know, in a lot of ways, it sounds cleaner, stronger. Uh, doesn't necessarily sound acoustic. But I would argue that if you were on stage and you were to mix this with a microphone, that might sound pretty good. But by itself, it's a very electric guitar sound. Before I show you anything else about the magnetic, let me bring that microphone back in. Now there's a little bit of air and pick sound in there. I think that's a fantastic sound. And what's cool is, if I'm on a big stage, I can send one or the other just by adjusting those volume dials. You can even have a blend. So right now, let's try that out. I'm gonna bring in a little of the pi piezo. And, and yes, I'm not sure how to say that word. Now you're hearing both and the microphone. So we have a magnetic, a piezo, and the microphone. Notice it's louder. I love 
love about Terry's background is he's totally qualified to hook all this stuff up, get it balanced, and make sure it's quiet. There's a... I don't have a hum. I don't have crazy hiss or weird sounds or pops going on. That's a cool sound. <laughs> That's a cool sound. <laughs> turn the mic off i'm going to turn down the piezo now we're going to go back to just the magnetic um, and i'm also going to turn the tone back up on this i want you to hear bright there we go using a clean magnetic sound so I'm, I'm kind of going for a Chet Atkins sound a little bit or something like that what's nice about a magnetic is how compatible it is with a lot of effects out there uh, reverb delay coursing all kinds of modulation also a little bit of distortion and things like that this pickup let's talk about this for a second first of all there are two coils in here i believe magnetic and one is picking up they're both picking up the strings and i'm you're gonna have to hear this from terry not me but one of them is what's giving us the sound and the other one is, I don't know if it's reversing the polarity or something, but it's its basically canceling out noise that you, you would have. And at low levels, it's not a big deal, but if you want to use some distortion in certain things, some of that noise gets louder. So the default setting here is what's called humbucking it's getting rid of noise and it's got a slightly darker sound this kind of pickup but there's a switch on the side this is really neat and this basically i guess it turns off that second coil so now you you're using what's known as a single coil system which is more susceptible here it is it's more susceptible to noise and uh, I don't think you're going to hear it. He's made this thing so quiet. The single coil setting, you get a little chimier, a little, there's some more highs in it. If I go back to the humbucker, it's a little darker, very subtle difference. single coil a little brighter usually when you use a single coil like on a guitar they know they're going to get a little noise in there um, and sometimes just by changing your orientation your physical orientation you'll tune that in or out um, this thing's pretty quiet I'm going to leave it on humbucker for now and this has the tone knob on it I think if you were gonna do more jazz, you could have that tone knob all the way down. I wanna bring it up a little. So that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. There's more. Let's keep going. I'm gonna tell you about one more way to get sound out of this, and then I'm just gonna 
take my time and, and just show off a bunch of cool different kinds of sounds. So there is a 13 pin out jack here. And a 13 pin um, has 13 pins. <laughs> And what this allows you to do is send all kinds of things down this one cable. And I'm not going to be able to tell you everything it does. But it's an alternative way to get the sound out. And where this really comes in is if you want to send this to a guitar synthesizer. What it's going to do is take the sound out of this instrument and convert it into digital information that can then be used to trigger a synthesizer. Not everyone's going to want to do this, but it's something I've wanted since I was 16. <laughs> so I've been waiting for a long time for this. Um, so what's neat is this piezo system here by Graph Tech, each string has its own pickup. And so each string comes out this 13 pin on a different pin. So three of the pins cover the three strings. The guitar synthesizers work best when they just get one string per wire, and then they can convert it into the digital. Another thing that goes down this, for instance, is the volume for what we're labeling as MIDI, Musical Instrument Device Interface. It's not actually MIDI coming out of here, but it gets turned into MIDI by the guitar synthesizer, and then you can use that for all kinds of stuff. This volume knob here, it's actually a control that can be assigned to anything inside a synthesizer. Filter, attack time, all kinds of stuff. Right now it's set to volume on the synth, but that comes down this cable. You could even have it control the lights in your room if you know how to do that. This uh, toggle up and down here, I don't know what you call that, but that allows me to go through the different patches on the synthesizer so I can have it sound like a flute or a bass or an orchestra, that kind of stuff. Boy, that's a lot. I want you to hear that. So what you're going to hear in a second, as soon as I get this set up, is uh, which it's about there, you're not going to hear the strings of this. Each string here is getting turned into information that can then drive the synthesizer. So let's, ooh, there's a little bit right there. Let me just tweak it. All right, so here's the synth sound. I'm going to go ahead and turn the mic off so you just hear the synth. <laughs> so some, some of you are wondering, why would you want that? Some of you are going, thank goodness it does that. I'm going to show you what's maybe a little more practical about it. Um, let me just show you a few more sounds, and then what we're going to do is blend it with the magnetic, blend it with the microphone um, to get a bigger sound. This is a neat sound if you wanted to sound kind of like a choir or something. So let's, um, let's look for a string sound. Let's uh, combine all this. This is where the usefulness of that sound comes out. I mean, if you were recording and you needed a trumpet sound, especially if you don't play keyboards at all, this would allow you to do that. And I think that's important to remember. But also, I think just to fatten up the dulcimer sound for people who do more modern kind of stuff. Some people say, well, why don't you just play this on a guitar? Or why don't you just, why don't you get an electric guitar? Why don't you get a, a synthesizer keyboard? What if you just want to do it on a dulcimer? What if you've done dulcimer your whole life? That would be me. 
I can play their instruments, but I'm a dulcimer player. I don't want to do it on a guitar, right? <laughs> I want to do it on ear. So I'm going to darken up the strings a little. And I'm going to put a little extra reverb on the strings. Now I'm going to turn that down for now and bring back in the magnetic. Sometimes I love having the uh, the electric out put just to run it into a tuner, even if the the concert's just picking me up with a microphone. So there's the magnetic. I'm going to bring in that string sound gradually. I don't want it to be too loud right now. Do a little finger picking here. A little loud. You can turn the strings down. I love being able to do that kind of thing. Um, most of these types of synthesizers have a pedal on them. So what can happen is you strum a chord, hit the pedal, the strings hold while you play on top of it. I'm also going to add a little more reverb on my uh, magnetic sound here. So now I'm going to strum the dulcimer, get that string sound going, hit the pedal, it'll hold that, and I can play on top of it with the magnetic sound. Some other applications of being able to drive a synthesizer or basically turn what you're playing into MIDI information is it's possible through a series of steps to actually play into your computer and after a few steps, turn it into tablature. You might need to clean it up a little bit, but if your playing is very deliberate and clean, you might not. This allows us to maybe play and get tablature which is totally awesome for this next part of the video i'm just going to run through a bunch of sounds that i've been getting with all of this <laughs> so uh, here you go